I'm Rantasmo, and Disco Camp needs more gay. First of all, just to be clear, by Disco Camp, I don't mean some sort of summer camp where the campers learn the California hustle and jam skating. Because if such a thing actually existed, I would be there right now. I'm referring instead to a genre of movie musicals that came out in 1980. Not the 80s, but the year 1980 specifically. It was the threshold just before the heyday of new wave and hard rock, and disco was already on its way out. But for some reason, we got three particular movies in this year, celebrating all things campy and all things disco. And in addition to being basically amazing, all three movies are completely gay without ever actually being very explicit about it. Let's start off with Can't Stop the Music, a fictional loose retelling of the formation of the village people. Contrary to popular belief, the village people might not be the gayest thing ever. Disco itself had quite a few roots in the gay community, and certainly the village people's image is pretty gay. But at the time this movie was released, only Felipe Rose, the Native American chief, was openly gay. Some of the members are still up for debate, but in any case, they definitely assumed personas with gay appeal, which also satirized images of masculinity and Americana, and somehow they managed to appeal to straight audiences along the way. Can't Stop the Music is about an aspiring songwriter, played by of course Steve Gutenberg, who forms the village people out of a ragtag group of guys who just happen to wear unusual clothing. Because in this movie, the cop is an actual cop, the GI is an actual GI, and the Native American is literally a guy who just always wears a full headdress and loincloth for some reason. The village people have always been heavily coded in irony, so it's not hard to forgive this movie for dancing around the issue of sexuality. Instead of actually referring to the character's overwhelming gayness, the movie just says that they're from Greenwich Village. And man, they are really from Greenwich Village. But if you work around all the subtext, it actually does have a coded pro-gay message. The stodgy antagonists are like, we don't understand you and your wacky outfits. And the village people are like, here's a song about milk. We win. The thing is, this movie isn't really even about the village people. They're more like tertiary plot devices that sing every once in a while. Most of the movie is spent on Gutenberg and his roommate, who is a retired supermodel who eats a lot of ice cream. They're pretty bland and they take up a lot of screen time that would have been better spent on the sexy construction worker. That said, this movie does have some catchy songs, elaborate dance numbers, and some pretty awesome dialogue. And the village people get some of the best lines. I'm a toll collector at the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Do all toll collectors look like that? Just the hot ones. Next up, we've got The Apple, which was shot in Germany and didn't make it to America until a year later. It's a sci-fi musical that's very vaguely based on the Book of Genesis. The movie's unusual in that it actually makes the more disco-y people the bad guys, but still makes an effort to appeal primarily to people who like disco, who by this point was pretty much nobody. As you can probably guess, it did not go over well. Here's the gist of it. In the distant future of 1994, America is under the control of BIM, a powerful record company that enforces a disco-dancing police state. A sort of discocracy, if you will. Our protagonists are Alfie and Bibi, singer-songwriters who represent Adam and Eve, as well as the hippie culture of the 60s. Bibi figuratively sells her soul to Bim, headed by the evil Mr. Boogaloo, who represents Satan. A bunch of stuff happens, there's a lot of sparkly things. But it all comes to a head when a magical golden car comes down from the sky, and out comes God, who represents God. And then the rapture happens. The end. Moral of the story, Everyone who's not a hippie is screwed. So the plot's pretty ridiculous, but some of the songs are sort of decent. Though a lot of them, um... aren't. <laughs> but if nothing else, the Apple's got a pretty distinctive visual style. And it's like I always say, you can't go wrong with holographic triangles. And last but not least, we've got the granddaddy of Disco Camp a film that occupies a very special roller skate shaped space in my heart. I am speaking, of course, of Xanadu. I love this movie. I don't even mean that in an ironic, I love to make fun of it sort of way. I actually enjoy watching this movie. Sure, the direction's a little off and the plot's sort of not there, but it's just so much fun. For the uninitiated, Xanadu is a story of a Greek muse, played by Olivia Newton-John, sent to Earth from Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus being made of lasers, to inspire a struggling artist to create a roller disco. Still with me? Too bad. There's really not much more to the plot than that. It's a pretty standard boy-loses-girl, boy-gets-girl-back romance story. 
except with lots of roller skating and glowing women. But there's just something magical about it. The electric light orchestra soundtrack, the juxtaposition between disco rock and 1940s aesthetics, the Don Bluth animated sequence, Michael Beck's pants, everything just comes together in a glorious cinematic supernova. It may be a mess, but it's a gorgeous mess. It was also recently made into a stage musical, which really pokes fun at the campiness of the whole thing. But call me crazy, I still prefer the movie. I think this sort of thing is just way more fun when the actors at least appear to be taking it seriously. These movies may be camp classics, but they're classics nonetheless, and it's unfortunate that their release only helped fuel an already intense disco backlash inferno. They have gained minor cult followings though, and I think that's really what they were destined for. And maybe they're just the sort of thing that can only really be appreciated in hindsight, much like the 80s themselves. It's all the way.